Welcome to this pocket navigation video. This video is part of our Phoenix 6 video series and deals with the optical heart rate sensor. The Phoenix 6 is the first Garmin smartwatch to include a so-called third generation sensor. The differences are easy to spot. Instead of the three small LEDs that were used in the Phoenix 5 Plus, the 6 has two larger LEDs. The new sensor is advertised as being both faster and more reliable and should also work with some restrictions while swimming. We tested the sensor extensively while running. Before going into the results in detail, we'd like to mention a few things. The efficiency of optical heart rate sensors can vary from person to person. This is due to anatomical differences such as skin thickness, the size and position of a person's veins, and so on. Another important factor is how the watch is worn and the type of strap used. Rubber straps tend to provide a better fit than leather ones, for instance, so they'll yield much more reliable results. Finally, temperature is also of considerable importance. On colder days, veins shrink and retreat into the body, making optical measurements less accurate. So strictly speaking, our test results are only applicable to the person who conducted the tests, but our experience has shown that the results do generally apply to the average user too. The following test results of the Phoenix 6 and the Phoenix 5 Plus optical heart rate sensors were compared to a Garmin heart rate monitor chest strap. Here are the results of the first test made during a run in a hilly area. On the left you see beats per minute, at the bottom the time in minutes. The smaller sections represent 10 second segments. At the beginning of the run the heart rate increases, as is to be expected, and both sensors, the optical Phoenix 6 sensor and the strap, are very similar. The third minute indicates a spike in the Phoenix 6 reading, which is not accurate as there was no reason for the heart rate to increase at this point. This is quite typical for optical sensors, especially at the beginning of an exercise session, when your body hasn't warmed up yet and your blood vessels are still constricted. Due to the temperature, optical sensors tend to be less precise at the beginning of a session. As you can see in this entire section here, the readings fluctuate and are less precise than they are during the mid and late section of the test. Nevertheless, after a while, the optical sensor adjusts and provides readings that are more or less synonymous with those of the strap. Minute 11 represents the first true heart frequency spike, caused by a slope. As the measurements show, the strap detects the rise in the heart rate instantly, while the optical sensor has a delayed reaction, as is typical of such devices, registering it 10 to 20 seconds later. However, this is a pretty decent performance as many other sensors take considerably longer, including the Phoenix 5 sensors, and sensors from the second generation in general took considerably longer. As the rest of the graph shows, this 10 to 20 second lag is a considerable improvement in comparison to older models, and it's a good result. Also, at the peak of the spike, both sensors overlap, which is also a positive result. During this decrease in the heart rate, both sensors are more or less identical, and, at this minor spike here, the diagram demonstrates again that the optical sensor takes 10 to 20 seconds longer to register the change. Here, they're about the same, and at this point, again, the strap registers a rise in heart frequency a bit before the optical sensor. When the heart rate decreases, the optical sensor is also a bit slower, about 10 seconds, as can be seen here as in, the heart rate recorded by the strap drops faster than the one measured by the optical sensor. And that pattern continues throughout. Here too, this sudden spike demonstrates the 20 second lag very clearly, and the optical sensor doesn't register the peak that the strap did, as it was only reached for a couple of seconds. Again, this is typical for optical sensors. During the last dash, the optical sensor didn't register the final spike at all, because it was too short and optical sensors take at least 10 to 20 seconds to detect sudden increases. In general, however, the measurements are very similar, and the average heart rate measured by both systems is the same. Both are at an average rate of 148, which means that on the grander scale, both systems provide precise measurements, including the optical sensor. The lag in recording increases in the heart rate is evened out by the lag in recording decreases, so in the end, the average heart rate recorded is the same for both systems used. This is a very good result. The V3 third generation optical heart rate sensor used in the Phoenix 6 is excellent, 
and we were very pleased with the results of this test. The next test represents an interval training session comparing both the Phoenix 5 Plus and the Phoenix 6 to the strap. The results are not from the same test. Both watches were not worn during the exact same session, as it's difficult to test two optical sensors at the same time. You'd have to use both arms, and different arms can cause varying test results anyway. Hence, we decided to do one test after the other, but using the same route, in the same way, in an attempt to cause similar exertion levels. The top graph shows the Phoenix 6 comparison, with a sharp rise at the beginning similar to the one in the last test. This is also represented by the increased stride rate in grey, which rises suddenly as the tester was sprinting. The blue section represents a sudden increase in heart frequency measured by the strap. The orange section demonstrates that the Phoenix 6 optical sensor takes about 20 seconds longer to register the change. And, as the sprint was more of a dash, after which we reverted to normal walking speed, the exertion level drops again rapidly. The peak was only reached for about 20 seconds, so the Phoenix 6 optical sensor doesn't measure as accurately as the strap and does not register the peak in the same way as the strap recorded about 20 more heartbeats. Comparing the results to the Phoenix 5 Plus represented in the bottom graph, you see the same sudden increase in the stride rate, lasting for about 20 seconds, and the strap registers that very precisely at about 190 beats, while the Phoenix 5 Plus didn't record the dash until considerably later, about a minute actually. So the Phoenix 6, which has a new type of sensor, is clearly superior in this example. Moving on, when the heart rate has a more regular pace, the measurements are relatively aligned. And, for our second speed increase, we intentionally increased the pace slowly, so at the top you can see the optical sensor initially adapts parallel to the strap. Though after it reaches a certain level, the same lag can be observed as before. Although the peak as such is recorded at only 5 beats less than the strap, and the same applies to the Phoenix 5 Plus. When the speed was reduced, the optical sensor in the Phoenix 5 Plus was clearly lagging, and this lag was more pronounced than it was with the Phoenix 6, which records more precisely. However, when the speed was increased slowly, the difference wasn't as extreme as it was with the dash. Later, we sprinted again for about 20 to 25 seconds with similar results as before. The strap records a rapid increase in heart rate, peaking at 190 beats, and the optical sensor takes about 20 seconds longer to register the changes. The Phoenix 5 Plus lags even more, taking about 40 seconds and fails to register the peak heart rate. Looking at the results of the Phoenix 6, you do see that it's an improvement over the older model, but it should be mentioned that specifically when it comes to interval training where brief peaks are reached, optical sensors are not the best solution and you're much better off using a strap which registers the changes to your heart rate within a few seconds. Nevertheless, the improvement is still there. In conclusion, one can say that the third generation optical sensor used in the Phoenix 6 is considerably better than previous ones. Both the reaction time and the general reliability demonstrate marked improvements. Exercise involving brief exertion peaks, such as sprint and interval training, is recorded better than previously, but if you're serious about wanting to record that type of exercise, you will have to use a strap. For all other training types, the improvements are significant. Average heart rate readings and the sum of time spent in each heart rate zone are comparable to those of a strap. However, for all optical sensors, it's important to warm up and to make sure your arm isn't too cold. 